friends welcome to the edutech channel and you are watching edutech today we are going to discuss about airport authority of india which is working under civil aviation ministry so guys if you are preparing for airport authority of india because uh, in the last couple of months airport authority of india has conducted many online exams and many candidates are selected and they are going to face interviews so if you are going to face an interview then you can know something about airport authority of india in our brief and you can face during the interview that what do you know about the organization and why you want to work why you want to join us so you should know about aai and ministry of civil aviation so let's start before starting i would like to request you to please subscribe our channel if you are visiting first time our channel so thank you and let's start so friends airport authority of india was constituted by an act of parliament and came into being on 1st april 1995 by merging two entities one is national airport authority and other is international airport authority of india the merger brought into existence a single organization and trusted with the responsibilities of creating upgrading maintaining and managing civil aviation infrastructure both on the ground and air space in the country so as per the site of the aai it manages 125 airport which includes 18 air international airports 7 custom airports 78 domestic airports and 26 civil enclaves at defense airfields but at present it is managing 129 airports aai provides air navigation service services over 2.8 million square nautical miles of air space during the year 1314 aai handled aircraft movement of 1536.6 thousand and passenger handled 168.91 millions it also deals in the passenger facilities air navigation services security of airports and aerodrome facilities hrd trainings and it implementations so these are the functions of ai in design development operation and maintenance of international and domestic airports and civil enclaves control and management of the indian airspace extending beyond the territorial limits of the country as ex uh, accepted by icao constructions modification and management of passenger terminals development and management of cargo terminals at international and domestic airports provision of passenger facilities and information system at the passenger terminal at airports expansion and strengthening strengthening of operation area that is runway aprons taxi bays etc provisioning of visual aids provision of communication and navigation aids like ils dbor dme radar etc ils is instrument landing system which is used for the landing of in uh, aircrafts in the in case of uh, severe weather conditions and without the help of the operators only instrument helps the pilot to uh, land the aircraft in properly and dbor is doppler uh, vhf omni range and dma distance measure equipment and radar you know ai some in important initiatives are gagan which is the acronym for gps aided geo augmented navigation system which is developed in india with the help of isro gagan uses a system of ground stations to provide necessary augmentation to the gps standard positioning services a network of precisely surveyed ground reference stations engine reference stations enres is strategically positioned across the country to collect gps satellite data using this information the master control center indian master control center in mcc generates messages to correct any signal error another initiative is babasma the bay of bengal arabian sea safety monitoring agency was established by airport authority of india to provide monitoring services for international ocean as airspace and to conduct safety assessment to support implementation of reduced horizontal separation other one is online flight planning 
So, welcome to the online flight planning portal for India. AI has commenced the online flight planning in India. The facility is available for the casual general aviation scheduled Indian operation operators. This facility is available for various Indian military agencies also. The service will be available only on approval of registration by portal administration. Hence, those who wish to avail the facility are requested to register their username and password login will be approved after verification. Let's have a look to the Ministry of Civil Aviation. So friends, Ministry of Civil Aviation headquarters is same as International Airport of uh, New Delhi, Sardarjung, that is located at Rajiv Gandhi Bhavan at the Sardarjung Airport in New Delhi. Ministry of Civil Aviation is responsible for formulation of national policies and programs for the development and regulation of the civil aviation sector in the country. It is also responsible for the administration of the Aircraft Act 1934, Aircraft Rules 1937 and various other legislation pertaining to the aviation sector in the country. This ministry exercises administrative control over attached and autonomous organizations like the Director General of Civil Aviation, Bureau of Civil Aviation Security and Indra Gandhi Rashtri Udan Academy and affiliated public sector undertaking like National Aviation Company of India Limited, AAI and Pawan Hans Helicopters Limited. The Commission of railway safety which is responsible for safety in rail travel and operations in terms of the provision of the Railway Act 1989 also comes under the administrative control of this ministry. So the attached autonomous organizations with the Ministry of Civil Aviation, Aviation are Director General of Civil Aviation, Bureau of Civil Aviation Securities BCAS, Commissioning of Railway Safety CRS, Air India Limited, Airport Authority of India and Pawan Hans Helicopters Private Limited. These all entities work under Ministry of Civil Aviation and obviously uh, you should also be aware about the Ministers of Ministry of Civil Aviation that is Mr. Suresh Prabhu and the Minister of State for Civil Aviation is Jayant Sinha. As per the AAI website, it claims to uh, be maintaining 125 airports in India, but as per a news which was recently uh, launched in 2017-18, that uh, Airport Authority of India is owns and manages 129 airports, out of which 94 were running in loss in the financial year 17-18, and it was uh, mentioned in Lok Sabha by. Um, Civil Aviation Minister Suresh Prabhu uh, stating the cause of the loss that uh, losses are mainly due to the low revenue generation to meet the total expenditure of uh, respective airports. Meanwhile, Minister of State for Civil Aviation Mr. Jain Sinha said that incident of theft and airport have decreased which is now 28 cases for 2018 uh, reported till June 2018 and this is a reduction in the older data for which were 59 and 64 in 2017 and 2016 respectively. So let's also have some uh, detail about Airport Authority of India which, uh, which is having mission to be the foundation of an enduring Indian aviation network providing high quality safe and customer oriented airports and air navigation services therefore acting as a catalyst for economic growth in the area we serve. The vision of AI is till 2026 is to be the principal aviation services provider in the country. AI shall adapt the, and facilitate the use of the contemporary air navigation services, upgrade and develop airport infrastructure, support improving air connectivity at unserved and underserved airports, have a structured organization, focus on profitable operation at major airports through continuing effects efforts on cost reduction and enhancing non-aeronautical So you can see this report was uh, uh, generated on 22nd annual report 2016 and 17 and according to this AAI is managing 126 airports including 21 international, 76 domestic, 8 custom airports and 19 civil enclaves at defense airfields. But now the figures are changed at, uh, at as a recent uh, information that it is managing 129 airports. 
is the general information about the body and the directorate of the airport authority of india as per march 31 2017 which is also same right now mr guru prasad mohapatra which is an ias of gujarat cadre is the chairman and uh, mr b s bullar ias it is he is director general of civil aviation non official member of government nominee sri arun kumar ias joint secretary of minister of civil aviation non official member nominated by government ms gargi kol ia and as joint secretary and finance advisor ministry of civil aviation it is again nominated by government and non official member now the official members of planning uh, mr sudhir raheja uh, member of finance as suresh member of hr anuj agrawal member of air navigation services ak datta member of operations in murthy non official members independent air chief marshal retired fali homi major and non official member independent tuktuk ghosh kumar is retired shri rajesh pandari as executive director of finance and ms r tulsi mahalakshmi as a company secretary website is ai.ro and the headquarters of reason wise it is northern region eastern region western southern and northeast so the with the corporate office at new delhi so the jung airport we can also go in detail for the members but it is not of much importance only just remember that mr guru prasad mohapatra a 1986 batch ias officer from gujarat cadre is also an alumni of jnu who completed his post graduation in political science and mphil in international relations from the same university and, and his phd from ms university baroda so this is enough for uh, the member of board of a we need not to go in detail of all the members so let's move ahead escaping the brief profile of member of directors this is the balance sheet of financial data from this is you can see that uh, data are from uh, 2016 to 17 and there is an increase in, from 15 to 16 which was 10 to 25 crore and in 16 17 it is 11 860 crore so other income is 681 uh, which is also increased from the 569.3 crore total revenue uh, expenditure other than finance cost and depreciations finance cost so let's come to the measures taken for improving the functions and profitability of the aai which is upper aerospace harmonization and other is gps added geo augmentation navigation system that is gagan and uh, one more is cadfm central air traffic flow management system so important is uh, gagan and it is an uh, implementation of a regional satellite based augmentation system as das which improves the accuracy of a gnss receiver by providing reference signal in a further step ahead to improving air traffic management procedure that will further enhance the surveillance capability of aircrafts in indian controlled space and in neighboring countries let's know about gagan what is gagan gagan is an acronym for gps added geo augmented navigation it is a space based augmentation system as bas jointly developed by isro and ai to provide the best possible navigation services over indian fir fighting information region with the capability of expanding to neighboring firs gagan is a system of satellite and ground station stations that provide gps signals corrections giving you better position accuracy gps alone doesn't meet the icao navigation requirements for accuracy integrity and availability so gagan corrects for gps system errors caused by ionospheric disturbances timing and satellite orbit errors and also it provides vital information regarding the health of each satellite service is offered by gagan or aviation forest management railway signaling scientific research for atomic studies atmospheric studies 
natural resources and land management, location based services, mobile tourism and many more. So how it works, let's uh, see in detail because uh, this is very important as per from the reference point of AAI's interview and other point will be the RCS Udan, the Regional Connectivity Service of Udan, Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagari. That is uh, most important uh, two points of AAI. So uh, you should be aware about things, services offered uh, we have discussed and how it works. Let's uh, see. Gagan consists of set of ground reference stations positioned across various locations in India called Indian Reference Stations, INRES, which gathers GPS satellite data, a master station, Indian Master Control Center, INMCC, collects that these data from reference stations and creates GPS correction messages. The corrected differential messages are uplinked via Indian uplink station in LOS and then broadcast it on a signal from two geometry satellite GZ8 and GZ10. The information on this signal is com compatible with basic GPS signal structure, which means any SBAS enabled GPS receiver can read this information. So that much is enough for the uh, Gagan how it works and the coverage area about coverage area two geo simultaneously transmits the Gagan signal in space. Gagan geo footprint expands from Africa to Australia and Gagan system also uh, has capability to cater 35 reference stations for expansion to neighboring countries. Gagan provides a very uh, where civil uh, aeronautical navigation signal consistent with International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO standards and recommended practices SARPs as established by the Global Navigation Satellite System GNSS panel. The Gagan system provides non-precision approach and PA service accurate to the to within the radius of one by tenth of the nautical mile. Required navigation performance or RNP is 0.1 over the Indian FIR as well as precision approach service of APV is 1.0. Approach with vertical guided over the Indian landmass on nominal days. The system is inoperable with other international SBAS systems such as the US wide area augmentation system VAST, the European stationary navigation overlay services IGNOS and the Japanese empty set satellite augmentation systems AMSAS and always seen less air navigation across regional boundaries only. So let's come to the second point RCS Udan. RCS Regional Connectivity Scheme and UDAN stands for Uday Deska Am Nagri. So this is done in a phase manner like RCS UDAN 1, UDAN 2, UDAM 3 and UDAM 3.1. RCS UDAN is working on the uh, issues of uh, reducing the airfare so that common men of India can travel by air. So this is the UDAN means Uday Deska Am Nagri. AI has also uh, started a uh, startup initiative. So uh, the theme is Renovate for Airport and timeline is 14 December 2018 to 14 Feb 2019. So the timeline is finished on 14 Feb on which Polwama attack happened. And the main focus of the AI startup initiative was uh, on the field of logistic, airport operation, IT and data analysis and uh, renewable energy, security solutions, robotics, air navigation systems and passenger delights.